So I'm going to start off with a HD720 PAL, 25 frames a second composition, 500 frames, 20 seconds in duration. Create a white solid, and that's just going to be so that I can apply the particle playground effect to it. So I'm not really going to see the solid, so it doesn't actually really need to be white, it can be any color. Add the particle playground effect. I'll just start off by just playing it to see what the default effect is. We'll see this little fountain of red particles in the middle of the screen. So one of the things you should remember to always do is to move the playhead back to the start of your timeline before you start changing parameters when you're messing about with particles because some of them can generate an awful lot of particles on the screen. If you change a parameter, it can wait for all those uh, frames to update before you see the effect. So it's a good idea to wind back to the beginning. So what we're looking at here is we can change color of the particle and particle radius, fairly obvious. But um, even just these two things can create nice effects if you animate them. So what you're seeing is animated color and size. So what's it, what's significant about that is that the, the the size and the color are created at the birth of the particle um, and stay constant throughout the particle's life. So if you animate the color, it changes the, the color for particles born at the new keyframe, but not the ones already born. So it's not like color, coloring the layer. So what we're looking at now is also animating the position of the emitter. And in a moment, I'm also going to just show how you can copy a keyframe, because this is something I find that my students don't always understand how to do. So if I want to copy the first keyframe to the end, I can open up all the keyframes by pressing U. Select the first keyframe. Control c to copy, move to the end of the timeline and press Control v So then the position will go back to its start position at the end of the animation. So you get this nice trailing particles effect. Okay, so I'm just going to take off that animation by clicking the stopwatch again and move the emitter back to the center of the screen. And I also don't want the particles to fall to the bottom of the screen. So we have gravity switched on right now. By default, it's switched on. So if we open up the gravity uh, section and change effects particles from, change it from all to none. So now the particles are not being affected by gravity. Okay, so let's just have a look at the particles per, per second setting. So right now on the screen I have it set to one particle per second, so it will be creating a particle every 25 frames. Increase the speed a little bit to say 10 particles per second. Now we're going to look at the barrel radius setting. So I find this a bit strange because barrel and radius both su suggest something round to me. But in After Effects, the barrel um, where particles are produced is square. So if you set the radius to 100, um, it will create an area of particles which is a square 200 by 200. So just something to be careful of. It's not going to give you circular pattern of particles like that. Okay, so set barrel back to zero. We're going to look at the direction settings now. So by default, these particles will spread out a little bit. Direction is zero, which means vertical, straight up the screen. But the direction random is set to 20 degrees 
by default, which means that they will spread 10 degrees either side of the vertical. If you set the random to zero, then you'll get an absolutely straight line of particles generated. So you notice that I've also set the velocity random to zero, so these particles are being emitted in a very regular fashion. You see a stream of single dots spread equally apart. You set the direction random just a little bit, you get this effect, which might be like a trail of cigarette smoke or something like this. Okay, so pointing out again that you can key all these parameters, um, if we key the direction of the particles, we're going to create a, a nice spiraling effect. We give it a couple of rotations. So I'll just show you how that looks. This is quite nice, but if we increase the number of turns of the animation, we'll get a much tighter spiral. So in a moment, we'll have a look at that. Okay, so increase the turns from 2 to 20. Now you can't see a spiral at all because there aren't enough particles, so we need to increase the number of particles per second. So having done that, now we see this like hypnotic looking spiral. So let's look at a couple of other things we can do with the direction and the direction random. So we turn off the animation again, and this time what we've done is give it a random direction of 180 degrees, so you get this semicircular exploding effect. So it's giving you 90 degrees either side of vertical by setting it to 180 degrees. So if you set it to the full 360, of course you get what you'd expect, you'll get a circular pattern of particles. So now let's look at some of the velocity parameters. So I've set everything back to almost zero, except I've moved the emitter to the side of the screen. And I've set the direction to 90 degrees so that particles are traveling horizontally. If we have particle second set to exactly 25, it's emitting one particle per frame. They're all traveling at the same speed, so you'll actually get this effect that none of the particles are moving because each particle occupies the position of its previous particle. And by adding some random velocity to the particles, you then bring back the perception of movement because obviously they're not all hitting the same spots anymore. Yeah, it's a very nice kind of data stream effect if you increase the barrel radius, which you see in lots and lots of uh, eye dents and things like that for TV programs. This kind of stream of square particles you'll probably have seen a lot before now. Okay, so putting things back to the center again. Um, this is kind of like we had before, it's 360 degrees around. But supposing actually what you wanted was an explosion rather than this stream of particles effect, what you need then is to emit all your particles at the same time to create the explosion effect. And to do this you have to be very careful because you're going to increase the particles per second to a very high number. I put 30,000 in here. But then um, if you kept 30,000 particles all the way through your animation, by the end of the animation you'd be having something like, I don't know, 600,000 particles and it'd be getting very slow. And it still wouldn't look like an explosion. What you need is to emit all your particles and then stop emitting particles so it looks like an explosion. So we key the particles per second at 30,000 on the first frame and after about four frames 
key it down to zero. So you'll get this burst of particles. You can play around with the random velocity setting to create a, a narrower or wider burst. Okay, so we're going to explore something else again now. So um, just notice that gravity has been switched back on again. Um, this is pretty much like the uh, spraying of particles that we we just had the exploding particles, except the emitter has been moved closer to the top of the screen and gravity's on. Um, what we're going to look at now is the fact that instead of having square particles, you can actually use alphabet characters as your particles. So under the options at the top of the effects controls, you can choose Canon text. Once you do that, whatever characters you type in there are going to replace the square particles. You need to increase the font size so you can see things. Okay, rather than explosion, we're just going to make a stream of characters from one side, pretty much like a, we, were, we were looking before when we were looking at the velocity settings. By default, if you're firing cannons from the left to the right, sorry, firing particles from the left to the right, text will come out in the wrong direction. So you actually want the text to be read from right to left when you're firing left to right so that it looks as if the character is in correct order. And I'm just going to increase the velocity so that the characters are spread out a bit more so you can see you can actually read what was typed in the text box. So one of the things I like to use this for is not to actually explode characters, but to actually use either standard font characters, but not alphabet characters. So random characters like this. Or to use things like wingdings or webdings characters um, to create exploding shapes. So this still doesn't look very random. When you generate shapes like this and they're all kind of different profiles, if you have enough of them and you blur them a little bit you create some very interesting shapes. So I've set this just to show the uh, greater than symbol right now which looks a little bit like an arrow which is why I'm using it. So I'm going to switch gravity on and point these characters upwards to show one more feature of this first part of the particle playground menu. So you have this auto orient rotation setting in the character options. And if you do this, then the characters will rotate to follow the direction that they're traveling. So you get this very nice shower of arrows effect. That's about it for the Canon controls. So I'm just going to show you one other thing, which is actually using all, pretty much all the things that we've seen in here, but this effect looks very nice, and it looks very nice simply because I've used some blurring and some vector blur and the CC glass effect to change the way those particle layers appear, but it's basically using all the things we've just been using in the tutorial. So I hope you enjoyed this, and watch out for the next one.